Hi, this is uh, Thad Wittenberg with uh, CAP Software and Kitchen to Bath Global Partners. Uh, welcome to the Inventor Channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Great Resignation, which I think is an incredibly important topic these days. As much as we're seeing uh, talent move from one company to another, and really what uh, people are looking for when they're deciding uh, where they want to work. I also wanted to introduce our special guest today. We have back with us Cher D'Ambrosio from Curtis Lumber. Thanks for joining us, Cher. Thanks uh, for having me, Thad. Yes, thank you so much. And our other guest today is Jason Wellborn from Wellborn Cabinetry. Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, we we really couldn't find anybody else. So desperate times, <laughs> desperate measures. We basically looked everywhere, uh, and there was just call after call from him begging to be on the show. So I also want to welcome. Yeah, welcome. We yeah. appreciate you taking time to, to add me to this. I, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to you, but we'll, I'll do my best. Then. <laughs> I know you guys are going to both do great. So, anyways, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, we're we're going to hit uh, three different topics when it comes to uh, attracting and retaining talent. Um, I think the first one we'd like to dive into is the company because I think it's absolutely more important these days for uh, people who are, are looking to move to another job, uh, how the company presents itself. And that's a, a, a numerous a number of different things that people are looking for. So let's, let's get right into the company side of it. Uh, you're going to see a lot of things uh, that are listed up there. Uh, the other thing I, I wanted to just briefly talk about is um, we're already seeing a lot of companies starting to gain a, a, a larger edge, competitive edge, in bringing talent to their company. Uh, I was talking to Cher the other day, and they've done an amazing job and you know, all the things from building the culture, getting people engaged, sharing the vision with them. Uh, and she was telling me that they had hired a designer from another company. And the designer was like blown away uh, when she came there to work. And lo and behold, she started talking to the people that she knew at the company that they had, she had come from. And the next thing you know, you're starting to get a couple more that have decided, you know what, if it sounds so good, why don't we make the move? And so I think you're going to see a lot more of that as the gap continues to widen between the haves and have-nots as far as companies are concerned and how potential uh, employees are looking at these companies. So I wanted to open the, the floor. Um, we'll start with share because I know you've done a lot of things and actually that's Jason's initiative now, too, and what they're doing to pull people in and keep them and be the best employer in their area so that they can attract a lot of these good people out there and, and also have them stay for a long time. That's, that's the real deal. It's one thing about telling somebody about the company, right? And they're like, yeah, that's great. But then when they come there and they start working, is that the actual environment, all the other things that you've talked about happening? That That's obviously extremely important. So, uh, Cher, maybe you could uh, tell us or talk a little bit about some of the things that you've done that have really been working in attracting some talent to your company. Sure. Uh, thanks, Dad. So, you know, I will be the first to tell you it's been a big challenge. We're we, like everybody else, uh, have, you know, grown and obviously it's been an incredibly busy year for our industry. So we've been trying to attract new people. You know, one of the things we figured out real quick is that we need to make sure that first impression is the best impression ever. So we're trying very hard and it's a work in progress to make sure those first 30, 60 days um, are as defined as possible. Um, we're as engaged as possible because everybody's a bit too busy and it's easy to 
you know, put someone in a job and say, here you go. But we're <coughs> really trying not to do that. And it, it, it takes a lot of effort not to do that when you're this busy. So we've, um, we've got an internal trainer. We use that a lot. And then we try to make sure that, you know, they're just not sitting in one position doing the same thing every day. You know, when they're new, we're trying to take them around and make sure they're working in each of our departments. So they understand how the the whole business works. And then we do some LMS training, we do some one on one training, and do a lot of check ins to see how they're doing. Because, you know, once they've been here a while, and they've connected with a few people, they're a lot more comfortable. But boy, those first 30, 60 days when they're there, and they don't know anybody, and, and they don't feel connected is we feel uh, the time that that we could lose them. So that's been our main focus. We, we work on that a lot. And we're continuing to work on that. That, that's great. It, I mean, it's so much about painting that picture of what they can expect when they get there. And when you start talking about like the, uh, the onboarding process and we have it defined and you can even show them like, here's what we're going to have. I, I'll be honest. Most companies aren't, they don't have anything on that front. It's kind of like a little hit or miss they come on and then it's kind of like okay here it is hop into the job and start selling or whatever their position is and uh that's that's a bad strategy i just you know like you said a lot of companies have done that are doing that and that's something i feel like definitely needs to change if they want to bring good people to their company um Jason, do you want to share a little bit about some of the things that you're working on within the Wellborn organization to uh, just what we talked about earlier, getting these good people and keeping them? Yes, that um, really a couple of years ago, my role kind of takes me in other areas of the or different areas of the company to really identify where we've got an issue. And I mean, we've all known people and retention has, has been such a major problem. Um, for years it can it's been our kind of our problem for years we've got plenty of people in but the retention and keeping them uh the first year of employment has just been so you know if you can usually keep them for about a year you, you've got them but i mean that ser first several months turnover has just been horrific um and i really spent a lot of time just trying to identify talk to a lot of people a lot of hr groups a lot of all types of people different companies to understand you know what people are doing and really understand what we're doing in our organization. And um, well, it's been a little bit of a journey and I wish I had some some really good wins to share, but we are just now really start, about to start the process that I feel will help us the most. Um, but really the onboarding process that you kind of mentioned earlier, uh, spending the time, the identifying, the training, um, placing people properly, uh, identifying the level of the employee, uh, to really, so you can get that pay up accordingly. I mean, one thing that we've seen companies do all around us is get in, in pay wars and uh, sign on bonus wars. You know, that, that stuff don't work. I mean, you know, you, you it, it, it can work, but you've really got to spend a lot of time, you know, once you get them in the door and make that on, onboarding process, that impression, first impression, you know, you can tell everyone how great you are, but when you get, get your, your people in here, and they really don't see a pathway. They don't, you know, the managers are not really spending enough time with them. Uh, and that's one thing that we've, we really have to focus on as a company is making sure in times like these, when you're so lack of people that the managers are actually spending enough time training and identifying and placing these people properly, giving them the tools that they need. Um, but really identifying all these things. And, you know, we've actually, for about the last year, we brought in a, a new HR director and brought in a, actually an outside company to help us truly identify that and try to put a plan together to attack it. And um, been restructuring the HR team. Really, we've had some monthly uh, training meetings to kind of get our managers to understand what we're about to go through. Um, because truly, in the last you know several years, I mean, the, the market has especially over the last year, it has grew just tremendously. And, you know, what do you do when, when people, when you don't have enough people, a lot of times your managers, they just dive into the work and, you know, that can be detrimental to your turnover. So 
you know, what we, what we are really trying to do is build an, an overall true retention team slash retention process, um, onboarding process that will last several months to where people are strongly being engaged, um, really spending, you're always not going to make the, the right choice in placing people making sure people are in the right positions. Um, they can do the position comfortably, um, making sure, you know, once you've identified, you know, what level employee this person is, you know, if they're somebody that just wants to do a, a same job every day or somebody that has the ability to cross train, do multiple jobs, um, setting pathways to where people can really, um, they really want to better their self, um, or just make more money in all different types of way. Everybody's not a leader. So, you know, you, you do things that people can benefit their self, you know, versus just move up and be a lead person or supervisor. You want people to be able to, to advance other than just those avenues. Um, yeah, going yeah. into the next year, we've actually got a, a team of people uh, combined, you know, and you have to get buy-in. You know, we, we found in a lot of conversations, you've got to get manufacturing, you've got to get, you know, your HR group really working together as a team, not against each other uh, to make this happen. So uh, starting in January, there's going to be a pretty strong initiative to really, there's going to be a team of people out there on the floor, some from manufacturing, and it'll probably be a, a good sized team. Some will be focused on training initiative. Um, recruiters roles will be slightly different. Uh, how much time, you know, the recruiter won't just get the person in the door. They're going to be a little bit more responsible for months to come, you know, um, touching the people on a regular basis, making sure that everything is happening appropriately and just really trying to build. We don't have all the answers now, you know, we'll probably make mistakes, but it's all in how just a constant improvement process to make this work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you. Um, you, you know, I give, kudos to you and to share. I think one of the things that companies need to really take a close look at, like you mentioned, is evaluating themselves. Like we've broken this down into like three different categories. You look at the company, the culture, core values, technology, all those things that they're looking for within a company. How strong are you there? And then what's the path of personal development for these people that we're going to talk a little bit uh, later about, and then also the, the benefits and compensation that go in there. Like you have to understand that all three of these things need to be going for you these days to, to make sure you're, you're bringing the best in. Um, I, I talked to a, a company recently and, you know, I always hear this feedback, you know, they're looking for people, they can't find good people. And one of them told me, it's like, you know, the only people I can find are mediocre, but maybe these days, that's all I can expect. And I was like, could you just repeat that back to me, what you said? <laughs> and he's like, uh, sure. And then like, immediately he's like, oh, I was like, look, if you have built all these things about your company and your reputation is out there and you have a good story to tell to them, you're going to attract good people. If that story hasn't been focused on, you know, within internally and within your organization to make it a, a much stronger package for these people, then you know what? That is all you're going to get. And like I said, there's going to be a big difference between, between the two in the future. And, you know, we, we talked about the big talent grab in one of the presentations before, and that is really, I think, going to drive how some companies are going to continue to get those people and take a tremendous, tremendous amount of market share. Why others are going to lose those good people and may sail into the sunset. Um, it just is what it is. And that's why we really were, Happy we were going to touch on this subject today because it's going to make a big difference for companies in the future. Um, one of the other things that I just uh, I'll put this one out to share, like when when you're talking to people and the importance of the culture and the core values and the vision and those type of things, because a lot of people they want to have purpose right in what they're doing yeah. out there the people that they're working around and i've seen a lot of companies that if, if they have core values or if they have a vision it's usually tucked away in some drawer that they came out with you know years ago and nobody ever talks about it and that doesn't do any good 
if it's not live and it's not a uh, part of the organization, you know, as people feel it, they see it, it doesn't have the impact that it can. So mm -hmm. I'd like to turn it over to Cher. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that part. Sure, Thad. And we do spend a lot of time on that. Um, our core values we that we talk about and we work our our performance reviews and things like that around our employee experience, customer experience, and community involvement. So we've, I think we've done a pretty good job of our employees understand that, but where we're working on it and, and really trying to live it a little better is like a performance review used to be uh, a review of the past year. You know, you talk about, you know, there'd be a little bit about what's coming forward, but a lot of it, let's call it 80%, was talking about what what the employee did, you know, or what we did as a team the past year. Now we flip that, where maybe 20% is is a bit of a recap and and obviously, you know, kudos and all those things, but but the 80% is focused on where do we go from here? You know, where's the career growth? What do we need to talk about in terms of training? What are you, what do you want? Are you, you know, happy where you are or have you decided that you want to take a different path? Um, I can't tell you the number of people here, and I was really surprised about it when I joined the company, of how many people have, have had a number of different roles in the company, which I think says a lot for the company, um, but we actually encourage that. So I think I came from a company, um, a good company, but when, when things came up, like when there were uh, job opportunities, you kind of waited for someone to, to tap you on the shoulder. You know, if you jumped on every job opportunity, it, it kind of looked like, well, you're not happy at your current position. You know, what's going on? I can tell you that it's almost an exact opposite here. Uh, we encourage people to say, hey, you know, this position's open. You know, I'd, I'd really like to get some training toward it. It's something I've always been interested in. Usually we already know they're interested in it because they've brought it up. But um, why wouldn't you want to keep a great employee that you've had? Um you know, and, and hey, if they've been doing something five years, I mean, we all know that some people in today's market, after two years, they're bored. So, you know, it's up to us if we can keep them and just have them doing something different. The expertise that comes with that is is awesome. So we've we work a lot with that. But what we've talked about um, prior, Thad and Jason, is that, you know, when we look at this, we when we used to send out a job description or talk to an, an, a prospective employee, we'd be talking about, you know, this company's um, been around for a long, long time. We have a lot of long-term employees. Um, you know, we talk about things like profit sharing and all those things. We have found that we've had to change our script because a lot of times when we're interviewing um, not only younger people, but a lot of younger people, but sometimes it's even mid-career people, um, they're not necessarily looking for something for the next 20 years. They might be just looking for a change. So instead of talking about all this long-term things that we can provide, we really need to focus on, you know, let's talk about all the community involvement we do and the ways that we support all the communities around our 23 locations, things like that, which really wasn't part of the conversation. So it's 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 definitely evolving. I mean, we're we're pivoting as we need to, and we need to continue to do that. But it's definitely changed. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to one of the things that you said in there that I found interesting when I was reading about this is that the largest uh, number of people that are moving, quitting their jobs, are the ones from thirty to forty. Uh, I yeah, thought exactly. it would be, you, you know, exactly. all the younger ones, all this transit stuff. But after COVID, everybody's kind of evaluated their life and where they're working and and what they really want to be doing. Um, I mean, the, the, this is so appropriate right now because over the last six months, every month, we've had anywhere before 4.2 to 4.6 million leaving their jobs which are all records, six straight months in a row. Uh, so it, this is a real thing that is happening now. Uh, and to the other thing that you said, Cher, is that a lot of times when people were interviewing somebody, they're interviewing them for the job, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what we want to do. Are you qualified? That's all they talk about. And you said, you know what? That script has to change. 
like there's discussions of like where would you like to go like what do you want to do where you know what things interest you like someone's actually like talking about what they want to do other than the job that's in front of them it doesn't mean Absolutely. that they wouldn't be happy doing that um and a lot of times we've talked to new employees that, you know, say they want to do something that they're not qualified for. And we talk about, well, we can start here and here's the steps that we can get you to that. And we've actually hired, you know, we have an, a, a designer training program. And so a lot of those discussions are, well, I want to be a designer. So we talk about, okay, here's where you start. Here's the training involved and here's how we can get you there. And the other thing I just wanted to touch on um, is that, one of the things that we really need to continue to work on is, is not all of that, but also when we do lose somebody is to do an exit interview or, or some kind of conversation. So we understand where did we fall short so that we can obviously learn as we go forward and get better at that. So we're, we're kind of, you know, trying to, trying to do a little changing on both ends. Yeah, that that's great. You got, they said today you have to mix it up. I mean, you have to, you just have to throw out everything you had and then rebuild what your 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 company is all about because the old model is not attracting people, right? Mm -hmm. You have to, you really have to understand what people are looking for and then build something that's going to be magnetic, you know, something that's going to pull those people in. We're just going to take a break for a second because we had, uh, I think, a question or two come in. And I always like to get people uh, engaged that are, are watching the show. So, um, David, I can't read that. But, um, hold on one second. I have it. This is from Kelly Daver. And she said, can you share ideas about personal development? How do you achieve it and what you offer in the way of personal and professional development options and programs? Uh, that's a great question, Kelly. I have no idea. No, I'm just kidding. We'll 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 definitely address this thing. And uh, Kelly wanted to say hi to Cher. I guess you guys know each other. Yes, we do. Hi, Kelly. Well, she can't hear you. Well, actually, she can hear you. This is <laughs> yeah. This is my expertise, technology. <laughs> Jason and I both embrace it. You know, we have it everywhere. <laughs> So to, uh, I'll just start off and then turn it over to, to you, Jason. I think, you know, the programs that people are putting together for personal development, sometimes people think personal development is just on the front of training to the job or training to the product, right? It's much more than that because like emotional intelligence and things there's things that we share here, like TED Talks, right? Where we're bringing in other information into the company of how people understand how they interact with each other. You know, some of the blind spots they have that they need to work on. And I feel like that's just as important as systems training or product training. You have to incorporate that in there. Because at the end of the day, you want people who are continuing to work on a higher expression of themselves. Was uh, you know, I read that somewhere, so I'm going to throw that out there. But it, the, the truth of the matter is they want to learn and they want to grow. Like no one wants to, uh, most people do not want to stagnate in their personal growth, right? And they want to understand how they're working with other people along with customers and their thought process and, you know, we listened to one and I'm shut up here the other day and it was really all about, Hey, everybody thinks their idea is the best, right? Well, we all know that that's not always true, right? But we have to open up to other ideas. We can't just say, Oh, I'm holding on to this. Don't poke holes in there. I'm going to get mad at you. Can't question that. And anybody else's idea, I'm not even listening to because I've already decided mine's the best. And you have to change that. You have to change that mentality so everybody understands the best idea, no matter who it's from, should always surface, right? And and that's that's you know that's a change for people. And uh, but that was a great learning lesson as we were going through it. It doesn't happen overnight, but uh, we're going to continue to work on things like that. We actually celebrate mistakes now, right? 
because you have to. You have to open the doors to say, you know what? You made a mistake. All right. You know, because guess what? That's an opportunity for everybody to learn. Don't hide it. Don't feel bad. You know, this is a way where we can make it not happen again. And so I think setting that type of environment in there helps people grow too. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Jason, would you like to uh, step in here and actually improve the conversation? We, I need help. So. <laughs> Well, when it comes to uh, personal improvement and really helping, I mean, I, I think that's what we're here as a company. You should be doing, you know, to help your employees be better, uh, identify what they want to do. I definitely, you know, what Cher was talking about earlier, focusing a lot of your reviews around where do you want to, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? Um, and that's part of the training aspect that we're really, and we do some of it here now, but really putting a large emphasis on, making sure people are in the right positions, understanding what they really like. And this is not just the, you know, it's heavily focused on the hour because that's where a lot of our issues are. But I mean, this overall trainer that's going to be over the group, they're going to be at different levels in the company. They're going to be training our leaders, developing our leaders. You know, you want a place to where your leaders, if they feel, I mean, nobody's a born leader. I mean, you know, and everybody struggles with different aspects. You might be great at running a assembly line, but you might be terrible at talking to people or dealing with situations. Um, you have to create an environment to where they have someone that they can go to to help them grow. Um, classes that they can attend, you know, whatever that issue might be. And that's one thing that we have started as a company month, monthly. Um, we brought in training, all types of training on different and guys doing a great job with training, but we're going to bring that much more internally to where if somebody wants private lessons to where they really can improve on their self, we're going to try to identify, help them identify the areas that, that they might need improvement on. Um, and then also positions. I mean, you know, if somebody's a manager on a single line, but we, at our company, we have all different types of areas to work, uh, giving people the tools and encouragement to, be something different in the company because you know if you've got good talent you don't want them to leave so that's where a lot of our initiative is going to be like i said we do some but nowhere near the level of what i would like to see and what we're going to focus on for the next you know and it doesn't happen overnight it takes time to really to really build it all revolves around culture uh you hear that word a lot um but it's it, it encompasses so many different things but uh, that's we're going to put a lot of emphasis on it. I'm I'm really really pushing development, identification, and training to help give people the tools you know that they need to be better. Um, people do; they want to be challenged. Yeah, and and yeah, that's this that companies are paying attention to their personal growth to try to help them grow, like professionally in all different types of areas. So meaningful to them, right? It just says you're not just a worker here. To get this job done we care a lot more about you than that uh, because as leaders you know what that's probably one of the most important things of our jobs because when those people grow um you know if personally and professionally well, that makes them a lot happier and you know that spills over into their life and i had a conversation with uh Actually, a gentleman, Steve, from Stevens Kitchens down in Florida, he had somebody there, uh, a lady by the name of Gabby. I probably shouldn't say this out there, but, you know, <laughs> when we were uh, starting to work together back in the spring, she was kind of, um, you know, she wasn't overly happy. I wouldn't say that. She just, she didn't realize the potential that she had and how much she wanted to put into the company energy-wise. And, you know, Steve working with her and, and now she's brought, she has more and more responsibility. And I got to tell you, it's like night and day. It's like to see her, she is just blossom in that position. And um, it's just been great because we know that, again, has an impact on the rest of her life. And that is probably one of the most, uh, I think, fulfilling things that leaders can do out there to watch that happen within their organization and the people that agree. I believe that's what leaders are for. They're there to, yeah. there's a few things that leaders do not, not, not do the work yourself. They're there to 
help their people grow, uh, give them the tools that they need and, and solve problems. And lifting people up is, is, is part of what leadership should be. Yes, absolutely. Um, another area I just wanted to, to talk about is uh, technology. We all know technology is moving forward, right? And I think when people are going to go work at a company, they want to kind of understand where they are. You know, are they uh, like using manual like spreadsheets or whatever it is that's out there and the computers that they're using, obviously, every employee before they ever come to interview with you guys or uh, whoever it is, they're going to look at the website, right? Is that website and the stuff that they read out there, it really should, is it showing the personality of that company? Um, that's important too. Like if they see something that's dated and the last blog was three years ago, you know, things that are starting to cross their mind is like, whoa, like what's going on here? Um, I, again, I work with another company recently and I was asking them what kind of laptops they have. And they're like, well, it's kind of all over the board. Like we already have one. We just use those. Or, you know, if someone doesn't and they need one, they'll get this or whatever. Like there was no consistency. Like, wait, when they show up day one, there should be either a PC or a laptop on their desk ready to go, right? And you tell them this is a thing that we're going to have day, in the first day. I've seen other ones like I didn't get my computer until two or three, like they ordered it the day they started. I was like, well, now it has to be to go through this and this. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Um, those little things I say, well, it's not are um you know, it, it's all a uh, like a touch point with those potential employees of something that could go really well but may not unless the company has already thought this thing through and and those things just go really smooth um so uh share we'll bounce back over to you when when people are asking you guys like how your systems and technology and you're looking at the website and for they're really looking for forward thinking, right? Like they are. And that's, uh, that's the conversation we're having. And, and we actually touched on that before where, you know, we start talking about, you know, the, the long-term things that we do and they're like, so what laptops do you use? And those type of things we, as part of the interview process, I always take, um, design, if it's a designer interview or even a design support interview, I always take them through our showroom and show them the designer's offices and workstations. Um, cause we use, um, you know, we try to use the best equipment. I mean, we need the best equipment. We're always using, um, the, the latest, uh, 2020, if it's working well, we wait and make sure it's, <laughs> we're making, we wait and make sure that it is, um, all of our designers like to have the second monitor. So the customer's can view the, uh, you know, view their designs and renderings while they're working and that type of thing. So we're, we're real big on trying to provide the support tools they need. And, and again, even the design support, we've probably doubled our design support in the last two years, um, just because we find the more admin we can pull away from the designers, the more they can design, which is what they do best. And it also gives us a building the bench opportunity with the design support. So it's it's worked all the way around. So we've we've pretty much doubled the design support in the company, uh, and that's worked out real well. That, that's great. I love the way you guys are thinking and the direction you're going. And that company that I was mentioning earlier, uh, the designers were talking to me like after our little meeting. And they're like, you know what? It would be really great to have that second screen so that when I'm talking to a customer, I don't have to turn my laptop around and I could just, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like that should be on automatically. Mm -hmm. They should be looking at that nice big screen to show the customers they're going through it instead of spinning their laptop around. I mean, they were on, like for a really good one, 200 bucks. And it's going to be so meaningful to customers as the flow instead of. And it, it's just, you know, those are the things that maybe you wouldn't have thought about. But as soon as one person said, this is what I need, um, we pretty much did it across the board. The other example that just came to mind was, you know, as we were, you know, taking our entire uh, design team remote, uh, you know, quite a while back, 
uh, one of the things that came up was DocuSign. You know, that wasn't something we were using before. And it's like, wow, this is a great tool. Um, we've certainly now that we're, you know, everyone's used to using it. We're using it all the time. You know, if someone's been in for a design review and everything's done and all of a sudden they just need to come in and, and you know, finalize everything, we can now do all that virtually. So, you know, it saves the designers time. The customers love it because everybody's too busy. And, you know, just tools like that that come up, we really do try uh, to be ahead of that as much as we can. Yeah, and what you just mentioned is great because, like, how do they interact with customers that aren't in the bricks and mortar showroom? Because they don't want to have to come in three, four, five times, right? They need to be able to start communicating online. What is the company providing as far as tools to be able to do that? So that whether the customer's in the showroom or online, they're having a great experience in any platform that you're interacting with them on. And uh, one of the other things that I think is a great tool is the 360 showrooms, the Matterport that a lot of people are kind of tying into. So if you go to our website, you can see our showrooms um, and do the 360 views. So for a show, for a customer, you know, sometimes a designer might just say, go on the website and take a look at our showroom before you come in. And then uh, we'll go through it together. You know, just another tool. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. Um, Jason, uh, we'll turn the floor over to you, like how you see advancements in technology and how they relate to the people that you have and how they can interact with customers that way. Um, anything uh, that you guys are pinpointing that you're trying to work on in that front? Well, I'm pretty, I'll tell you, illiterate, but I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been of, you and me, brother. <laughs> you know, a lot of our stuff is based around systems in the plant, you know, as far as easy, easy of use for our people on the floor to be able to, you know, if it's a special cabinet, I mean, that's a big focus. And we have a, a really extraordinary IT team that is constantly working on. We just basically redone our system. Um, even, I mean, we, our system wasn't even set up for what we just went through with the huge amount of orders and, you know, we basically had to rebuild our whole way that we put things out on the floor. Uh, they do a great job. And anything that you can do to make people's lives easier to save time to where they're not going here hunting. Uh, but just my experience, I mean, me and my wife, we've been in the middle of building a house during all this chaos. And just going into showrooms and the things that you were talking about, Sherry, people don't have time. People have been so busy. You know, there were, people's lives are so busy. Anything that you can do to... You know the the screens, the three D stuff. Uh, it, it's 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 so amazing, and it, it it makes people. It really just takes that experience to another level. But even the DocuSign, just the simple things like that, you don't think are big. It saves people time. They want to come in, you know, once or twice, get their selections kind of over with. But you know, making four or five stops to finalize things. I mean, it. it anything that you can do to make people's lives easier with technology is. I think everybody would agree. Uh, you don't really think about them to start with, but once you get them in place, I've heard that so much uh, from different companies and customers. You know, once they put them in place, they got so many compliments and it was just made everybody's life easier. Right. And I really went, you know, because you're manufacturing, which isn't my background so much, I, what you just mentioned makes sense. Like if you're in the plant, like what technology, what kind of uh, you know, machinery do you, equipment do you have in there? Is it old? Is it new? Does it help them make their jobs easier? You know what I mean? I, I, that's, that's a really good point. It's valid. Like if they're looking somewhere else and then they say, wow, this place is really up to speed on this stuff. That's what they want to be part of. Well, a lot of your machinery now, you know, it, you know, our engineering department can enter the stuff from their office and it directly goes out there to the machine. You know, they don't really have to go out there. Some, they still do, but, you know, we're looking at, and some companies already have this, but I mean, just just things to be able to help you track your parts through the plant. Um, there are systems that you actually implement, chips and all um, things to where you, you know, it's big place, you know, and, you know, sometimes you lose two or three doors or they're misplaced or they're took off a line and, you know, our guys are hunting them for hours and then all of a sudden you reorder it and by the time that door goes back through the process, well, it, the other one shows up, you know, so having things that you can quickly identify where something is, um, just anything you can do to, to make things simpler, to 
to find information people need is, is huge. And we're constantly looking at that and got several projects right now going on to help all that. You draw it, special cabinets. I mean, anything, you, you know, where our, where our plant works, that type of stuff, it distributes to four or five different areas. So, I mean, you can't just have all that information to build something, all the drawings going to one area, it needs to be distributed everywhere. And, they, and you know, paperwork's not always the best thing. If they've got a computer they can go to, pull it up really fast and see, answer the question that they need. They're not trying to get in touch with that engineer, uh, ask the question. I mean, it's anything you can do to make things simpler, the better off you are. Yeah, that, that, that's perfect because that causes frustration. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to find this. I got to look for that. It's not easy to get to, you know, that's not where they want to spend their time. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to go through all this stuff in these files here and find it. And if they can get it at the, you know, their fingertips and it's right there, they're like, oh, this is so easy. I can solve this issue or find out the answer almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that does come to you know, obviously the, the advancement of technology within your organization. Mm -hmm. Um, one other thing that I was just going to mention was, you know, we saw we saw a lot of studies out there. And this is pre-COVID, right? That said the average engagement level at companies is 30%, 25 to 30 in the United States. Wow. But, yeah. I mean, that's true engagement. You have this like the, out of 10, you may have three that are really engaged in the company. And then you have like another four to five that are there. They're doing a good job, but you know, it's a job for them, you know? And then you got the laggards on the end that are just hanging on, filling the spot that's out there. And you look at the power of the company, the potential of a company, and you're thinking, okay, organizations used to be able to get away with that, right? Cause that's, that's the way, the reason it was like that is the way that they had set it up for the people that work there, right? If they're, if they're not being asked about their opinions, where their voices are being heard, where their help getting developed, why should they be engaged, mm -hmm. right? It's like, hey, I'm just here as a job. That's the way they look at me. And so they, they lose interest. And that's terrible because those people, especially the ones on the front lines that are working in the plant or they're working with customers, um, you know, they're probably, they're the biggest element you have within your organization when it comes down to it. And, you know, people, they need to be reaching out to these people. If you're building better processes, boy, you better have them engaged in understanding what that new solution is going to be. So it's not a surprise grenade that's thrown in there and are like, where did this come from? Um, because then there's no buying, right? Like if you're engaging these people and they're participating in these meetings of the things that you're trying to work on and they have a say, of course, because they're the ones that do it every day. Um, and, and that's how you come up with that solution. They are definitely going to be a lot more, uh, willing and anxious to take that new process or whatever it is on because they've been part of building that solution, right? So we, we need to get people more engaged. You think, look, if you want to beat another company and they have 30% engagement and you have 80%, uh, I don't think there's any question about who's going to end up uh, more successful than the other one. And, and the other so thing is true. just terrible to have that low engagement, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's a scary percentage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then you wonder, why are all these people quitting their jobs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if they only had 30% that were really interested, when they all, COVID stuff started moving on and there's lots of opportunities out there, they're saying, you know what, heck with this. I, yeah, I want to find something. I want to land somewhere where I enjoy what I'm doing. They actually care about me more. Uh, I think that's just going to continue to, but this is a great opportunity for those companies that are working on that stuff to start bringing all that talent to themselves. That's going to be key in the success of theirs in the future. Um, I think, I think to ahead, tag sir. on, yeah, if you don't mind, I'll just tag on that. Just the, I think the good conversation we had the other day regarding it all comes down to communication. 
So, you know, we tr try really hard to collaborate and those type of things, but, you know, it's easy, especially in the crazy times we're all going through, you know, to work on a program and then say, oh my goodness, I haven't told this person or that person. There's just so much going on. Um, this morning we were talking about our um, first quarter promotion and everything. And um, we involved some of the design team, some of the management, you know, getting a bunch of different opinions. Uh, you know, it does help to get the buy-in. And the other thing you made me think of, Thad, was we just recently did our um, yearly inventory. We're kind of uh, transitioning with our inventory process. And the, this past Sunday was when we did our flagship store. And one of the things that I thought was so impressive, and I didn't really think about it till we were all here, was that all of the managers and directors were here with the employees. And um, you know, you could tell that meant a lot to the employees that, you know, everybody was kind of, you know, uh, working together and, and, and helping out and, you know, celebrating and clapping when it was over and all those things, it just helps. And uh, the last thing that we've worked hard on, and Jason, I think this is something that, you know, that you, maybe you're already doing or, or is, a, is a fun idea, is this past year, we did breakfast sandwiches some days, we did food trucks, mm -hmm. we, we'd never had done food trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it was just a great way to kind of bring people together that in different departments and things like that. And, you know, it's during lunch hour or during the morning, it was no big deal. And it, it works so well that we're, we'll always do that from this point forward. Yeah. Um, Cher, could I get a, like a schedule of when you're having these food days and, uh, providing no, Dad. no, 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 no. <laughs> I think, okay, that just doubled the food bill if he shows up here. But, uh, yeah, what you were saying about having the leaders engaged in stuff like that, the ivory tower where, like, presidents or board members are, like, they're all up here and they're not interacting mm -hmm. with the people down on the front line, that's years bygone, right? That yeah. stuff, they, they need to see those people. They need to know their names. They need to talk to them, right? So yeah, they don't absolutely. feel like, oh, they're better than us because they don't even come down and talk to us, right? Mm -hmm. that, that whole role needs to reverse itself. Uh, I know you're doing some stuff like that, Jason, too, at your organization. Then we're going to tie this up. Um, and mentorship, if either one of you, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. But, like, how are you seeing, because you're out on the floor all the time, Jason, I know. You know, I, I think that's the reason you never return my calls. But I'm assuming <laughs> yeah, that wait, you won't give up on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you're down there and you're working hard with these people. I, I have to expect that they they like seeing you down there, you know, trying to improve things. But if you wouldn't mind elaborating a little bit on that, that would be great. Well, I mean, I will tell you, I'm out there on some, not near as much as what I should be. Um, because of my job, it just kind of takes me into others, but I'm definitely out there. I definitely try to get engaged. We do as a company overall, everybody. My dad, he's down there so much, I think they want to run him off a little bit. He's <laughs> he, he, he loves to be engaged, and that's that's kind of where his bread and butter is. He's he loves manufacturing. You know, my role it takes me in a little bit different, but I mean, even throughout all these times, a lot of my family have uh, we've all been out there on the floor, uh, helping out, you know, during these difficult times, and you know, we. Everybody out there, we 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 do our best. I mean, a lot of them are like family. A lot of our people have been there for years. You know, you know a lot of them. I think my brother knows everybody in the plant by name. You know, um, it is so important. Like Cher said, if you if you stay up in Ivory Tower and you're not involved, and, and the people don't know you, it, it it creates a much different environment when when you are involved. Even just visiting customers and getting out and seeing people, it it's a different it's a different it shows a different air. You know, when when people come around having the conversations with people, helping them, you know, if they've got issues. I mean, I, I'm involved in issues all the time. People know that they can reach out to me. You know, you, you know, is that chain of command? You don't want to overstep your managers, but sometimes it's okay to get involved, just to understand what's going on, um, to help people and show them that you are an, a, a company that does care about their future and care about the environment. Um, I'm heavily, I strongly care about our culture now, and I think there's a lot of improvement that can be made and it's not that it's anything negative against our people. We've got great managers, uh, but it comes from the top down. If you don't instill that from the top down, 
that you want to improve and you want to be a better company, I mean, where's it going to come from? It's going to come from the bottom up. No, I mean, you, your leaders and managers have to want to push that and get involved, get the buy-in. You mentioned buy-in earlier. How do you really get people engaged to make something work? Just throw something at them and tell them to go do it. No, you do your best to get them involved, whether it be, you know, and that's, that's one thing that we, we do have a decent amount of that here at our company, but we want to just continue to expand on it. Um, but ha- being involved with your people is, is, is it is it's unmeasurable really uh, yeah showing yeah. appreciation telling people how much you appreciate them and what a good job they do uh that that goes a long way I, yeah absolutely uh we're gonna wrap up here just a second but i love this saying from nelson mandela i mean everything is about setting the right example right from leadership out there and he's like how can you expect people to change if you're not willing to change yourself, mm-hmm. right? they have to see those changes and then they're like, oh, okay, they're changing too. And they're asking us to change, not just you're changing and not us. And that that really throws fuel on the fire about buying, you know, like, okay, we're all doing this together. Mm-hmm. Um, last thing I just wanted to, cause Sherry, you mentioned something to me about mentorship. Like Mm -hmm. when people come on board and working with someone else that's already in the organization, would you mind briefly just sharing a little bit about that? Sure. Um, And a lot of that, honestly, is some of that faded away a little bit in the last couple of uh, maybe at least the last year and a half with everything going on and everyone being busy. But we would always have and, and it is still part of our onboarding program where we have people actually observe and work with our senior staff. Um, you know, watching them go through a design review, watch them go through a closing, watch them go through customer interaction, um, and then have someone when they are at the point where they're actually, you know, trained and designing, that they have a mentor that they can go to and that they have an assigned specific designer that they can go ask those questions to, you know, if they're, and then, you know, we talked about collaboration and, and that's one of my favorite things when I walk out on the floor and I see three or four designers together and they're looking at, you know, different vision boards or they're talking about a, a really complicated design and how they do it. Um, there's a lot of everyone's, you know, everyone's uh, we always say every every uh, expert started as a beginner, but we definitely have specific expertise in certain areas. You know, a couple of designers that are really uh, specialize in commercial work and, a, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So they all really work together to, um, you know, uh, work on designs. And, and like I said, they have their mentor, but they also know that they can go into um, whether it's our 2020 expert uh, trainer, or if it's another designer, they can go in and ask them a question and, and be able to feel like they have that support. We always talk about, we got your back, you know, so right. people feel like, you know, they're not out there, you know, geez, I hope I got this right and that type of thing. I yeah, like what Jason right. said about the, you know, that it's, you know, you got to celebrate your mistakes sometime and it's not just one person that has the right answers. We say the same thing when there's a big, you know, 20, if we have a big design 2020 error and sometimes, you know, obviously it happens, we say that's the best training we could ever buy. You know, let's just learn from it. You know, let's not talk about how bad it was. Let's just figure it out, fix it, and then learn from it. Yes, no, it is. The fact that they have resources and they feel comfortable going to them and they know those people are, even if they're busy, are willing to help them, yeah. that, that's a big deal. Um, the last topic I want to make sure that we touched on is compensation and benefits. Um, I think, you know, everybody's different, like Jason mentioned earlier, like the important, but the the company and the personal development have certainly moved up the ladder and i'm not saying that you know the compensation and benefits aren't important but those other ones have gained more importance with most people that are out there right now but we can't overlook um compensation and benefits and one thing that i see is that if you have the ability to pay people more it all comes down to your ability to increase productivity within your organization it's driving those efficiencies so 
if a designer could sell a million dollars and uh, they're capped out based on the system or whatever is out there and, and you make it smoother for them, right? You get all the manual stuff. <laughs> there we go again. <laughs> this is just like one of the things to draw attention to me all the time. No, this is the second one. Episode, I think, 10 is the one I'm scheduled to do that again. <laughs> All righty. I just want to make sure Frosty doesn't get any coffee on him. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, because everybody has to work with, every company has to work with constraints, right, of what uh, they're able to pay and the benefits that they have out there. But increasing the ability to improve pro productivity definitely will play a role in how that can open more doors to what you can provide to those people. Um, and I just think that is something else that organizations need to be able to focus on too. Uh, Jason, do you have anything that you'd like to mention on the, I mean, it's crazy out there right now. You mentioned bonus, you know, signing bonuses and, uh, you know, the, the war of like offering people, you know, more to seal them away. And um, that's not everything with everybody right now. But, you know, what are, what are you guys looking at? Not only, you know, in the planner everywhere, as far as the, the the compensation and benefits equation in this whole thing. Well, internally, I mean, it is it's extremely important because. You know, all the talk that I, I did about training, advancing, giving people the tools, helping them grow, that, that goes along with the pathway. You don't want to, and the more you advance somebody, the more you train somebody, the longer you retain somebody, um, and the more productive they are, that's more opportunity and the less people that you need. I mean, you're more efficient. The more, I mean, everybody knows that. I mean, the the better workforce that you have trained and the better efficiencies and the better that your managers are focusing on problem solving and dealing with issues and developing people, you need less people, you know, so that yeah. gives you more money to invest in the people that you have. So that's part of that pathway. I mean, you, you yep. tell people, this is what I want to help you do. And this is what I'm going to do for you when you get there. So it's, you know, my dad talks about that you pay a bone of, on uh, performance, you know, a lot of SOPs, you know, they're working on a lot of that in the plant, you know, for machinery, you know, time studies and all that, you know, and when people reach goals, that's when you pay them more, you know, I mean, if you just pay right people coming inside the door because the person down the road is doing it, I mean, not to be rude, but I mean, we all understand the different levels of, of people and, and people coming in the door, you want to attract, retain and keep the best ones. Um, and if you're going to develop them and show them a pathway, that pathway has to revolve around compensation. Nobody's right. working for free. You know, we're all, yeah, we, I mean, culture's huge, but, you know, you know, that the money is just, should just be there. That's the way that I look at it. Compensation, you, you want to be the preferred place to be and the best payer, you know, because you have the best people. So, yeah, you're right. You brought up an excellent point. Having the best talent it helps make your company so much better then that gives you some allowance to work with those people. And the thing you said about developing them, right? That, like taking their skill levels up to here, that also uh, really brings some, uh, you know, their opportunity for financial uh, gain in there. Um, we do have one other question Then I'm gonna get shares feedback on the compensation program. Uh, David's putting it up right now. Um, says, how are uh, we working from home requests handled? It is allowed, and if it does apply to both the designers and the support staff. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Kelly. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna flip this one to share and let her address it. It's about working from home, not only for the designers, but for support staff. And then we'll bring this to a close. Sure. Uh, basically, you know, at one point we were all working remote and uh, we couldn't, most of us couldn't wait to get back. So it, it wasn't too long. Um, right now, we, most of, most of our staff, not all, because there are certain situations where um, if they can work remote and it makes sense for them to work remote, we're more than open to it. 
Um, but as far as our design team, our designers, most of them are now working in the office. However, um, we're very open. We have them set up so they can basically do everything they do here at home so that if it makes sense, if they have an extra project they're working on or for whatever reason they can't come in one day because they have a sick child or something like that, um, you know, flexibility, thinking outside the box, we'll do whatever it takes. So we're very open to that. But most of our employees are working, you know, inside. I mean, we're a retail business and we have customers walking in and um, in most cases they're here. Um, and, and then obviously we have the virtual options because some customers are still not comfortable walking in a, uh, right. a building. So we want to have that available to them. Flexibility has definitely moved up the list. It sure for has. Things that it are sure important has. for people. Yeah. So Think yeah, you got to have that as part of it too. Listen, I want to thank my special guests, Cher and Jason, for joining us today. Uh, I think it's been a wonderful discussion. This is like, this is universal. It's not only in the kitchen and bath industry, it, it's everywhere, right? So I, I hope a lot of people got something from this and, uh, and you can start examining or looking at your company internally and understand where you have the strengths and what areas you need to work on. Uh, always available if you ever have any questions. Uh, the last thing is our next uh, episode on the Adventure Channel is gonna be January 20th at noon, and it's gonna be on augmented reality and how that's gonna impact our industry because there is so much money going into that and it ties directly into uh, our industry in a lot of different ways. Like even training and things that people may not be thinking of, all that stuff is gonna like look a lot different in the future. But that's the exciting part, right? We're, these days, you don't show up to work and you're bored, right? And it's not just the stuff that's on your plate for that day. It's like the stuff you're thinking about a year from now, two years, because you have to. And it's just going to accelerate. Um, but anyway, happy holidays, you guys. Again, thanks again. I love having you on here. I'm sure Cher will be talking. Jason, probably not, because he won't be answering the phone when I call. <laughs> but all in Dad, all, he I, answers my calls. Well, yeah, that I, I think that he does. He does <laughs> everybody else. It, I'm telling you, it's just a coincidence. Every time you call, I'm right in the middle of something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he looks at the phone and like, do you need to get that? And he holds it up like, uh-uh, no way. But anyway, hope you have a very safe and happy holiday season. And thanks again, you guys. Happy have a good holidays. afternoon. Happy holidays. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.